Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at troubleshooting the process of going from a sketch to a vector in Illustrator. Now before I start the video, let me tell you where else you can find my Illustrator training. I have a series of courses at Udemy. In the description below are coupon links for those courses. My coupon prices are always at least as good as anything that Udemy can offer and often they are better. I also have classes at Skillshare. The coupon in the description below also includes an offer and it's also at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and often better. If you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. So let's head back to Illustrator and let's have a look at the problem that somebody sent to me. So this is the illustration that they had, the pencil lines underneath of their basic illustration and they went and created it in Illustrator. And then when they went to fill their shapes, this is what happened. And this was the point at which they said, help, can you help me? Because in actual fact, this was supposed to be a curl and this was supposed to be the filled shape. So the fills aren't working as they expected. So I went back and just recreated the line work so that we could have a look at this process ourselves. And I've just opened the image that I created, which is a standard JPEG image. It's opened in Illustrator just with file open. Let's start by sizing the artboard so things are a little bit neater. I'll click on the artboard tool to target it, then double click and go to the presets. And at the top of the preset list is fit to selected art. So I'll click OK and now the artboard is the size of my art. Now I'd like a little bit of breathing space. So I'm just going to increase the space around a little bit by holding the Shift and Alt keys and then just the Alt key just to add a little bit of space around the original art. Now I'll go to the Labs palette because I want to keep an eye on what's happening here. And I'm going to lock my image down. Now the image isn't 100% symmetrical, but I'm going to assume that we do want a symmetrical result. So I'm going to choose View and then Rulers and choose Show Rulers because this allows me to drag in a guide that we're going to use. So I'm going to place my guide roughly where I think it should be. And let's just zoom in and see how it looks across most of the design. Well, it's pretty much centered in the bottom elements of the design and it's just missing slightly at the top. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to lock that guide down. Now the best way to approach a design like this is to look at the area that you want to be the actual filled shape. So what I'm saying here is that it, the filled shape is going to come out to here and then down. It's going to be this diamond here. Then it's going to come out to here to where it joins up, down here and then the diamond. So we're going to draw one half of this. So I'm going to draw the left hand side. I'm going to use the pen tool. It's just much, much easier to do. You could try it with a pencil tool. I think you'll probably get better results with the pen tool. And you're going to use the guide as your starting point. So you want to intersect with this guide. That's really critical. Now, when you're first drawing, you don't want to bring this set of handles across that guideline. It can't come any further than the guideline. Otherwise, you're going to end up with sort of reverse loops in your shape. So you want it to come at least somewhere to the left of the guide or on the guide, but not to the right. Now, when we're drawing with the pen tool, we don't want a lot of anchor points, but I do want a few. So I'm going to put one down just there and this one's going to be the last one. So I'm going to come to sort of the middle of this place where these two lines are going to intersect. Before I finish with this point, I'm holding down the Alt or Option key and swinging the handle right back because I want to take off in this direction. So I want to change the handles direction before I head off. Avoid making points on the curve if you possibly can. So I'm going to add one about here to try and get this curve. And then down here onto the guide, just ignore what the drawing is saying. We want to make sure that our anchor point is on the guide. And again, when we drag down, it can't swing across to the right hand side. To move the illustration, I'm just holding the space bar. And that lets me continue to draw with the pen tool. Just holding down the space bar allows movement. When you let it go, you can start drawing again. So I'm going to come down to about here and put in an anchor point. And then I'm going to make this a proper diamond. So let's go down here, making sure that we're intersecting with that guide. Here, just pulling out these shapes. We're going to come down to here because this is where the two lines join. 
So I can probably make that in one movement here. Before I finish with this line, I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and swing the handle back because I'm heading in the exact opposite direction. I'm going to pick it up at the top of that diamond. Again, making sure that my handles don't cross over here. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key so I can swing this handle around because this is the direction I'm headed in. Click and then click back on that line. It's really important that every one of these points is intersecting on that guide. Now I don't have any stroke or fill so I'm going to select over the line. Let's add a stroke. I'm going to make it a colored stroke. In actual fact, let's just make it a bright red. And let's give it some substance. Well, I don't have my stroke options up here. I can always find them through the appearance panel, which you can get to by choosing window and appearance, or you could also choose window and then stroke. Just going to increase this stroke point to about two pixels. So there is our line. I'm going to turn off my image for the minute and you can see the line in place. Well, we're going to select over the line and we're going to reflect it across this guide. And we can do that with this tool here, the reflect tool. Click the reflect tool and then hold the alt or option key as you click on the guide. So you're looking for the word guide to appear on the screen when you're hovering over it and just click once. And that makes the guide the place where the reflection is going to occur. Now we want to do a vertical transformation. So we want to take it from this side to this side. We want both pieces. So we'll click copy. So this gives me both pieces here. It's really important at this stage that you lock down your guide because what we're going to do is stick these together. So I've actually just turned off my guide. So to stick these together, I'm going to select over both shapes and I'm going to the Shape Builder tool. Click on the Shape Builder tool and with these two shapes selected, I should be able to draw in here to join the shapes up. Now some of them are and some of them aren't. So we're just going to deal with the ones that aren't in a minute. So these two are joining up really nicely. These are not. So let's go and have a look at the problem areas. Going back to the selection tool and let's go and select over the problem which I think is up here. And that is two individual shapes and they're just not joining together at all. So let's zoom in and see what the issue is. It seems as if these two points aren't in the exact same place. So I'll select over both of them. I'll choose Object, Path, and then Average. And I want the two lines to be in the same vertical plane. So I want them to be in the same vertical line. So I'll just click OK, and that will move them so that they're on top of each other. Now I think that was probably what was causing the issue. So let's go back and select the shape and try again with the Shape Builder tool. Well, that was all that it took. Let's have a look at the bottom one and see if we can see what the issue is here because I think this is the other one that's not joined up. Well, this is the problem. It's really clear here that these points are not in the same place. Let's select both of them. Object, Path, Average. Make sure they're in the same vertical alignment. So click on Vertical, click OK. Now this should fill just fine. Go back and select it and drag over it with the Shape Builder tool. So you should end up with shapes. So we've got a shape here and they should fill. So when you click here to reverse the fill and the stroke, they should fill perfectly. So let's just check to make sure that they all do fill just fine. Now you might end up with little bits left over. I can see this in the layers palette. I've got a little bit hanging over the end here. So I'm just going to remove it because it's not really helping. We've got another bit here, so we'll just remove it. So we should end up with our four shapes. And they can be stroked as well as filled. So let me just go and get these and let's give it the red stroke. And in this case, let's give it a white fill. So I don't think I have any colors here at all. So let's just go to the color selector and I'm just going to fill them with white. Also, I think I'm going to increase this stroke weight and just find that one pixel is a little bit on the light side. So we've created those main elements from the design. Let's go back to the original image and see what we need to do now. We've got little curly bits that go on the ends. And so they're just going to be created using lines. So let me show you how to do this lot because the rest of them are going to be pretty much identical. So we'll go back to the pen tool. 
you can start at either end it really doesn't matter I'm just going to come around here and draw out these shapes trying not to put a point on the very edge of a curve because that usually is a bit of a disaster so got a fill happening here I'm just going to turn that off while I'm here and let's go into this shape because we want to ultimately put this little curl behind everything and just finish off the curl if you need to you can come back in at this point and just adjust the end so the longer the set of handles the nicer the curve is going to be but you're going to need shorter handles to actually make it round your curve so just might need to fiddle with this a little bit to get a really nice curve you want to make sure that this curve is as nice as it can be before you do the next step because the next step is going to be sort of permanent you're going to make all the other curves out of this one I've turned my guide back on but now I need a guide down here so I'm going to drag it down to about this position let's zoom in and make sure the guide is in the right place now a guide in Illustrator is really just a shape so you'll see it in the last palette I'm just going to lock it down because I've got it there now so let's go and do our reflection again with the selection tool select over this shape we're going to reflect going to alt or option click on this guide pick up the guide here I want a horizontal movement here and I want the original and the duplicate so having done that we're going to now select both of these and we're going to flip them across this central guide so again back to our reflection tool alt or option click on the guide this time we want a vertical transformation of course we want the original and the copies let's zoom back out and have a look and see what we've got so these four shapes are these up here so I'm going to select over all four of the shapes I'm just holding the shift key as I select all four of them and then just move them above the guide and above the image at the bottom but underneath the filled shape so they're just tucking in under here and you can see a slight mismatch in the original illustration here if this was of concern to you if you actually want this sort of hand-drawn look and you want things to be a little uneven you could just pull it up into that position so you can move these if you want to these ends are going to be done exactly the same thing just follow along from the line and just sweep these out as soon as you've done one reflect it to create the second one grab both of them reflect them over here and ditto for these sort of little teardrops the other thing that you're going to create is this shape it's the same in all four places so I would just turn everything off and lock everything down so that you have everything clear so I've turned everything off except for the guides and I've locked everything down and obviously I've still got my image visible so now before we draw this line it would help if we actually move this guide so let's just go and get this guide that we created earlier and just drag it up because that's going to give us something that we can line everything up with so I'm going to zoom in here make sure the guide is pretty much in position I think it's probably pretty right it might come down a pixel I might just nudge it down no there's really nothing in it there so I'll lock the guide down let's go and get the red color that we were using couple of points in the stroke couple of pixels in the stroke no fill let's start with the pen tool I'm going to do all of these in one so I'm going to start on the line again making sure that I don't go the other side of the line going to make this with as few anchor points as I can so I'm going to drag up here as soon as I've got that curve before I finish off that point I'm going to swing the handle around with the alt or option key so it's heading in the direction that I'm going in just making sure that I'm lining up with this guide each time now you could make a set of these and then join them all up together but it's probably just as easy to make them all as a single line right now before you finish it swing it around you can use your spacebar to move everything while you're still drawing this again alt or option swing the handles around and finish up on the line press escape 
to just finish drawing. Now let's just turn the image off and you'll see that everything's really spiky. At this point you might want to make some adjustments to your anchor points so you could do that. I'm just going to straighten this one up a little bit. This one looks like it's a bit below the line so might be a bit more careful about placement of it but you can make those adjustments at this point. The other thing I want to do is to remove this sort of pointy bit so with the line selected I can go to the stroke panel with window and then stroke. You can also do this from the appearance panel. Let's see the rest of the options and we can come down here and just adjust the cap on these lines so it can be a flat cap or it can be more pointy. Just decide what it is that's going to look best for the design you're working with. So now we've done that let's select the line go and get the reflection tool Alt or Option click on the guy. We want to flip horizontally, turn preview on so you can see what's happening. We want to make a copy. We've got our two shapes. So at this point we can get rid of our guide. So I'm going to go and unlock this guide and just trash it so it's not in the way. I'm going to get rid of this vertical guide as well because I don't need that any longer. And we'll just trash that. Now I've seen a slight overlap here probably if I was doing this for myself I would go back and fix that and fix this a little bit. The line probably curved down too much but just showing you my process for trying to get the result that you're looking for and this will be just fine. We'll go to the shape builder tool. I'm going to drag into these shapes just make sure that they all become a single shape. And they're lining up pretty well this time but we do have some dots here. Have a look here in the layers palette. We've got a sort of dot here and another one down here. We can try and select and just delete these. Just press the delete key and just make sure that the whole design doesn't break up when you do that. But it looks like these are sort of superfluous. We don't really need these. You might need some of these other paths. It might be important to have those. You can always turn this on or off and just see if you're seeing where that path might be and whether you're going to be in a trouble if you don't have it. And if you don't get into trouble because you don't have it, then just get rid of it. So let's have a look at this one. I'm going to turn most of these off except for this. Well, obviously that was something in here. So we're just going to try and stick some of that back the bits that we need. The other bits looks like we don't need those so let's just trash them. And now we've got left the bits that we actually want. I would select over all of them and group them. We'll choose object group. Now let's zoom back out. Let's turn our base image back on. Grab the group, alt, drag, a duplicate away. If you add the shift key it's going to move in a perfectly vertical direction. I'm going to alt or option drag this, hold the shift key so that I'm going perfectly vertically and same thing up here to go into position up here. Now we can turn back on the other bits and turn off our underlying design. Now if you want these sets of shapes, the ones that are going horizontally, to be underneath the central element, all you need to do is to grab them here in the layers palette and just drag them to the bottom. And then they'll be underneath the shapes themselves. So that's how I would approach a design like this. This is how I would approach creating it. If you want to eliminate the possibility of getting these things happening where these curls are being filled in rather than the shape in the middle, you just really need to look at the design itself and just ask yourself which bits are the bits that I want filled in. Then that has to be a shape on its own and these other elements need to be separate shapes. Even though these are curls and if you were drawing it yourself you would be drawing it as a single curve. In Illustrator no you need to create this base shape and then the curls are separate shapes. So I hope that this has been of help to anybody who is trying to do something like convert a sketch into an Illustrator drawing. If you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.